Alright, welcome back. This will be episode number 8 called Functions and Function Blocks. Uh, this is my learning structured text for PLC programming video series. Um, here we go. Basically, we've got our normal pizza oven here uh, that we've been working with. And I think it's worthwhile to add a second pizza oven. So what you can do is copy all this code and change a few variable names here and there. Actually, most everything's local, so you don't really need to change any variable names. We would just make another one, make another set of buttons, make everything. The problem with that is, of course, at some point, either we're going to need to add another one, and we've got to do all that again, or we uh, maybe we need to modify the code, and all of a sudden now we've got ten places we've got to change the code, because we've copied it ten separate times to run different ovens. So we don't want to do that. So what we'll do is create a function block. Um, let's cover functions very briefly just so you know the difference. So I will add a function here. A POU, which is Program Organizational Unit. Um, function block is what we'll talk about in a second, but a function is a simpler version basically. So the return type, you can pick one of these return types. Typically you're going to know what sort of data you want back out of it. So um, we'll do something simple like uh, um, a bool. So we will make a bool, a POU called, um, actually I named it POU by mistake here, but um, we'll do a compare. And the inputs we can do um, um, in one as a dent and in two as a dent. And what this would say is, uh, well, let's call it is greater, something like that. So function is greater. The variable in here, we won't really need any actually, but that's where you would put the function's local variable. So we can just say if um, n1 is greater than n2, then um, is greater equals true, else is greater equals false. So that's it. That's basically a function. So you're setting the function itself of type boolean to is greater. So in here, you if you were curious what was greater of two numbers, you could type uh, is greater um, to one comma two, and so that would say, uh, oops, is greater. Um, that would say which one is greater, or basically it would say uh, is one greater than two. No, it's not. So it would return false. So you would say uh, result equals, and set that to the function. So. Um, that's it for functions. You can do, you know, some cool stuff with them. They're definitely useful. I use them a lot. So, uh, but that's more simple. So, when you need to turn something that's more complicated like this as inputs and outputs, and it needs its own memory space to sort of keep track of things in the background, um, you know, anything in a function, as soon as that function's done being called, everything's gone. It's just nulled out. It's gone. Um, but with a function block, you actually, when you instantiate the function block, it's a lot like a class in other languages. So when you instantiate the function block, it will actually carve out a piece of memory just for that function block. So if you instantiate it 500 times, you got 500 chunks of memory that are in use. Um, but basically, we can turn this entire program here into a function block. So we will go ahead and add a POU as a function block. Ignore all these advanced options here. Create that. Come on now. So it's called POU. So we'll call it FB Pizza Oven. And I think we actually should have to change it here to, um, I keep forgetting to name them. So um, yeah, save it, sure. Okay, so we've got, let's delete this old function that we don't need anymore, um, and I already deleted it from there. So, let's see. First, we need to convert this program that we've made into a function block. So, I need all of these variables, and I'll just pull them right out of there. Um, inputs. So some of these are not inputs. Some of these are actually outputs. So I'm going to move some of them. Total pizzas cooked. Um, that's an output. And so, like, so pizza on deck um, is just an internal variable. So we'll move that down to our locals. And as is the timer. And 
the state. So I'll move those down here and this down here. And these two are buttons. So let's go ahead and actually leave those. The trigger we weren't using anyway. We were just wasting space on here. And then these buzzers and lights are probably, we would call those outputs. Um, so let's clean this up a wee bit and move on, save it. Okay, so we now have a function block for our pizza oven. Um, I didn't actually copy the code, so I will select all, put that there. So hopefully everything should basically work. Um, you can read an output, you can write an output, you can't write an input, but you can read an input. So um, there's, you can do everything, but technically the, like the programs that call you can read these, um, which is kind of almost annoying, but anyway, uh, that's, that's part of the program. Normally those would be private variables that, that no other functions could read, but here if you call it by name using its namespace, um, you can find it no matter what. So either way, it's worth knowing. Uh, so next step is to attempt to instantiate that function block. So all we're doing is saying, hey, we need a variable to work with that is that object is what you would call in other languages. So we can name it. The convention that's typically used is uh, capital FB is for a definition of a function block, whereas lowercase fb is for the instance of the function block. So um, we're just going to get this working with one oven for now. And uh, fb pizza oven. And the all caps thing is just because that's what I put. That's normally a convention for a constant, but let's, let's let that slide. Um, so I'll call this like my instance of oven one. So now I need to call that code. So this is the main program that the task is already going to execute no matter what. So it's going to do nothing now um, until I start calling this. So if I open parentheses here, I can see its inputs, I can see its outputs. So B load pizza equals. So here we're saying the internal variable or the input variable of the function block and we need to assign that to something. So I'll just put true for now and I need to go make some variables for those. So the outputs, we don't need to do anything here with on the call, although we could assign them somewhere if we wanted to, but let's not worry about that. Um, so this needs to equal something as well, and this really shouldn't equal true. So we need variables here. Since I already have the viz set up to use these, notice we've changed, we've moved all this code, so the namespace is different now. Uh, my buttons don't go to anything that I put on this visualization here. They don't do anything. So um, what I need to do here is in main, I'll go ahead and add those buttons in. And um, let's see, this should work just fine, even though their names are the same. So it's saying, hey, I'm using my local load pizza and putting that into your input load pizza. Um, and we will um, go from there, I think. So let me save it and my viz is going to be horribly messed up. I'll be surprised if I get online here. Um, in yeah, so it's, it's whining about my viz being messed up. So all of these are, are looking at variables that are no longer there. So um, we'll go fix that in just a minute, but otherwise it looks like everything's good. So let's fix the viz, and uh, I'll do that off camera, and I'll get right back to you. Okay, so I fixed that up. I just did a find and replace uh, P main with my pizza oven and went ahead and uh, put these back to just pushing the buttons right in the main program. So we have these two booleans here. Um, we're loading. I do notice a problem already though is that in the pizza oven uh, instance of the function block, when we get this load pizza input, we're trying to write it here. Um, sorry, not this first one, it's, it's down here. Um, handle buttons slash sim inputs. So this load pizza button, as I'm calling it here, um, we're trying to turn it back off, and really that's not up to us anymore. Um, so the better way to do this would probably be to do some R trigs. So um, FB uh, load R trig our trig and uh, we'll do one for remove as well. Um, that way the user on the other end, this, 
this pmain calling the function doesn't have to worry about um, how long that button is held or anything like that. So um, I'll go and switch those back to an app style button and uh, I'm going to put these as R trigs instead and uh, I'll be right back after fixing that. All right, so here's what that looks like. Um, I've got my FB load R trig uh, triggered off of load pizza, and one time it just puts one on deck. So that's all it does. If this stays on for a minute, it's fine. It'll only put one pizza on deck until that goes off again, resets this, and we're good to go. So over in main, um, everything looks the same, except these Booleans now uh, via the visualization here. I just tap it and I no longer set it true. So it's just going to come on while I'm holding this down. So combined with the R trigs inside the function block, that should fix everything. So uh, let's go ahead and give it a shot and see how it works. Um, let's download it and run it. And nothing should happen right away. So let me give you a little tour of what happened though, is we've got these two local variables in main here. We now have a function block of type this. So this is what I was saying. It makes the memory for it. Like it's it's carved out a piece of pmain's memory. Not that it's really limited, but um, it's got pmain's some a very small piece of a very <laughs> the total giant amount of memory on this PLC. Just uh, to mention, we have a ton of memory. So um, you do have a FB pizza oven here. You can see all of its stuff, which is weird because some of these should be privates, but um, Either way, you do have your outputs in here as well, like your state description, I think I put an output, but um, the buzzer and stuff like that. And you can force these variables here and do stuff like that. So um, it's good. We're running it here, and it's chugging away every time. Uh, I should have put my heartbeats in that will help you know it's running and see it's running, but I didn't. So let's see if it, if it does its job now. So we'll put a pizza up. Boom, it's in the oven. Everything's good. It's out of the oven. I mean, basically, we've got the same exact functionality. Let's remove this one. We've got all the same functionality we had before when it was just a program, but now it's a function. So what you can do then, if I want a second pizza oven, this is sort of the the gold here, is my pizza oven 2 is also a pizza oven. So I can save that. I can hop online and go online. So now it's got its own timers and its own everything. It's going to keep track of everything on its own. And so I've got, in, well, you do have to actually call it. Um, but what I can do is use these same inputs and just run the thing. And uh, run. I've made an online change, so it didn't even actually change any of my stuff. But um, when I load a pizza, let's see what happens. See if I can get in here and see. Yeah, pizza oven 2 is doing its job, baking that pizza. This one's baking, oh, it's burning the pizza. Now this one's burning the pizza. So, um, you know, they're synchronized at the moment. Of course, you would normally have separate sets of I.O., inputs and outputs, for each function block instance. Um, another cool thing you can do is uh, you can come over here and do array. Uh, let's see how do you do the 0 dot dot. What the heck? 0 dot dot 10 of pizza oven I'll delete this this will now become array instance 0 this will become 1 Let's see if I did that right it's gonna move variables to a new memory location that's fine so now I have an array of 10 pizza ovens which is really awesome so I can open that up boom there's all my pizza ovens if you have to call them all of course but you can even do a you know for I equals 0 to 10 do and uh, you would just call I like this boom boom you get the idea so that'll run 10 pizza ovens let's see if that works if I typo it no anyway um, that's the point you can uh, instantiate and you can do all sorts of uh, good stuff with function blocks we make function blocks out of everything um, for the most part. Some people don't even really use programs because, other than the main program because function blocks are so useful. So, um, Anyway, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm going to try to keep this one as short as possible. And uh, let's see, next up is going to be um, um, system libraries.
uptime, enums, memory can copy, pointers, arrays, maybe some hardware stuff, so stick with me, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.